already <laughs> with the good crew. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on Taya Kyle's Facebook page. Um, you're probably very familiar with Taya's story, but for those of you who are new here, um, today we're proud to host New York Times bestselling author Taya Kyle. Um, she's also the widow of Chris Kyle, author of the massive bestseller American Sniper, which was turned into a movie starring Bradley Cooper. After losing Chris, Taya entered a period of grief and self-reflection that led to her writing and publishing her new book, American Spirit, which goes on sale, to, um, goes on sale tomorrow. Um, going through her own experience, uh, Taya dipped into her own reserves of strength with the help of her friends and family, and also many strangers across America who came forward to support her. And it inspired her to go deeper into um, the communities across the country and find people who are turning their personal pain um, into inspiration to help heal the communities that they live in. Um, so we're just thrilled to have Taya here today with two special guests. Um, so thank you. Thanks. It's great to see you. No, thanks for having me here. I appreciate it. And it's super fun. We got all serious right now, but I've actually, yeah, I'm like we all just got into work mode, but you know, Barb and Donnie here are a crack up. So hopefully it'll be a fun hour. So um, the book is called American Spirit, so I wanted to open up with a general question of what does having the American spirit mean to you? Well, I think, you know, so there's this part that I'm realizing as we go through these stories, and I think these two would agree with me, that if you look at America as, you know, a person or your friend or something like that, you see she's angry and you see she's hurting, but you also see that there's this great soul there that just needs to be reached. I think, you know, you do that definitely with American Snippets, you do it, Operation Safe Haven. We're looking to bring the soul of the country out just like we do with the people that we serve. I have Chris Kyle Frog Foundation, I'm trying to get to the, the work on the soul. I think when we do that with people and we start recognizing there is a, a, an amazing spirit here that is not, um, it's not entrenched in the political divide. It's totally separate from that. Good things are happening. We need to recognize that part of our spirit if we want to heal and be a strong nation. So this book will really help bring people together, uh, no matter where they stand with what's happening in the country. So do you want to introduce um, both people on either side of you and, and we can get to know what they've been doing? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I have a lot of questions, so I know we're going to take questions from the viewers uh, of Facebook and Instagram, and we're gonna we're definitely gonna get to those. I, as you know, I'm never short on words, and even though I know these fabulous people, I have so many questions for them as well. But uh, Barbara Allen is also a widow and um, one of the strongest people I know, and she's got a crazy sense of humor, so it's been fantastic getting to know her. She's taken her tragedy as she's raising four boys and turned it into. American Snippets with Dave Brown, and I think they're doing fabulous stuff, so we want to get to that. And then Donnie has taken his pain, and he was in the military as well. And these are not all military stories, but, you know, my peeps here today are, all <laughs> have that tonight. tie. Yeah, just for tonight, and then they're up. Um, <laughs> they, you know, Operation Safe Haven is such an incredible story, and you use your own pain and, mm. and really your own heart of service people in general, not just military, right. but law enforcement, and that's where my heart is too. It's service is service and uh, you're facing the evils of the world day in and day out, and people forget what first responders go through and military people go through. Sometimes just knowing right. about the, the evils is hard enough and then facing it head on is really tough. So you've taken a unique approach to helping people too yes, that I'm so about because I think getting out in nature and beauty and yeah. all of that is very, very healing. So love to talk about it more, but I'm gonna let Molly lead when we're going to do that or take questions first? Uh, yeah, why don't we just jump in and we can, Donnie, if you want to just tell us a little bit about what you're doing and the community that you're running. Yes, ma'am. Um, June of 2016, uh, we purchased um, 277 acres in southern New Jersey. Um, didn't know why. You know, we just knew, um, you know, people always say, oh, you have great faith. It's, I, I don't have great faith. Um, for years, I was in the military and then I was a police officer, so I'm just used to following the chain of command and orders. Um, so we were given our orders to purchase this property with really not understanding why um, and how can we truly bless the community with this property um, and then finding out between 22 veterans committing suicide every day, um, law enforcement officers, that number's not known yet, and the amount of homeless veterans that we knew just in our area, we decided that instead of building a church building or doing anything conventional, we're kind of crazy in South Jersey. So uh, we started building tiny houses for homeless veterans. And uh, it'll be three years in um, June of 2019. Um, we raised over $300,000 on GoFundMe. Didn't even know what GoFundMe was until we started the project. 
and uh, I'm honestly I'm just sitting next to Taya Carlson. How awesome is this, dude? Yeah, exactly. But you know what? The, so the funny thing yeah. is, though, in, in all seriousness, like there's a there's a part of your spirit that is yeah. so service oriented, and I think when Jim and I, Jim D. Felice, who wrote American yeah. Sniper and American Wife with me, when we sat down and, and thought this is the next book, right? There was like a duty to share these stories with the public because right. when you're going through a hard time, you need hope, right? Yeah. And hope comes in different forms. I think not only are you providing hope, but Tell me a little bit about the hope that you needed when you were in the hard time. Getting personal. Um, oh, yeah, right away. Barbara Walters <laughs> yeah, right just up bam. in there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Dude. Um, anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like I built houses. Can we move to the next question? Yeah, that's it. Done, <laughs> Barbs. Um, I don't know. Um, 19 years ago, I remember what the barrel of my service duty weapon tasted like. Um, you know, most law enforcement, most cops do. Um, my time in the military was actually had a good tours, uh, good MOS, um, but as a police officer, the things I experienced, um, and now they diagnose what's called cumulative PTSD. Um, as we were talking earlier, going on tour, um, you know, getting stationed overseas for nine months to a year, um, but when you're handling those calls every day, especially in the Southeast DC area where I was at, um, it's, you know, 10 hour shifts, it's, it's, it's overwhelming. Um, so a couple instances or circumstances I was involved in, end up taking time off. Um, I actually was an addict for almost two years. Um, just trying, nobody knew back in 2000 what PTSD or cumulative PTSD was. And I was just trying to self-medicate. Um, I didn't know where I was. Um, again, so, you know, fast forward, you know, I just thank God for a second chance um, where, you know, using the pain and the experiences that I went through and now being able to turn that and help other brothers and sisters going through the same thing. Um, the VA has recently come out with a study saying peer-to-peer -peer counseling is truly the best and they see the best um, results from that. So that's where everything is. Um, as Taya shared, we, we've got a 65 acre lake, you got 200 acres of woods, and we do peer to peer counseling with vets, not only just the ones that live on the property, um, but also we work with our local police departments as well as veterans in the community. And we just try to bless them and just, we're just here, so. You know, that's the thing, and I, I know you're very humble and I yeah. love that about you too, but you know that part of you that says, there's, there's an issue and I've felt it and I can help it. And I know, Barb, you're gonna talk about that too. I, I've often looked at life, and, and by the way, the stories in here are not all faith stories, right? right? I think all of us have strong faith, but you know, people that are of different faiths or atheists, you know, they're doing good yep. things too. And sort of my philosophy is that we need to recognize all of that, right? right? And and just as a general overview, I've I've started to see this world differently than I used to, and I really believe that it ends up being, long story short, sort of a right. chess match between you know, good and evil, right? And I, I see it, my personal beliefs are that there really is a Satan, right? And it's his realm and, and God will bring good. But I see these things as, I don't think God brings the bad, I think that he brings the good, right? So I think Satan makes a move on the chessboard and we're all like, oh my God, that's it. Right. Like you said, you could taste the barrel of your gun and we're gonna think, oh my God, that's it for Donnie, right? Like, you know, your, your husband dies and you have four little kids. Like, how are you gonna survive that? I think when you're watching the chess game, you go, this is not right, there can't be a God, there's nothing here. But when we look at chess, it's a game of sacrifice and gain, right? And so I think God's already put the pawns in place and he's five steps ahead. And so every time we think that Satan's in check, God's like, I'm checkmate, right? Yeah. And I, I mean, I, my vision is he's cussing a little bit, like checkmate, mother, you know yeah. what I mean? So but, I say on yeah, Sundays. Yeah, exactly, right? Like you gotta say it like it is. You know, but, but truly when I see that, I think, you know, there's, the, there's a darkness that looks like we got Donnie, yeah. right? Like we got him. And you came through that and said, not only do you not got me, like I got you yeah. plus, you know, I'm gonna save all these other people. And you said, not only do you not, you know, got me, but I'm, I'm gonna take all these other people into the light with me. And it gives me chills because I think that's how good ultimately wins in the world, right? It's, but, but you had to go through that pain because you wouldn't have started this program right. without the pain. No, Genesis 50, 20 says, what man intended for harm, God will use for the good for yeah. the saving of many people. Um, so it's just, again, like you said, you know, what moves were made against us in our lives. Um, you know, we just, you know, rather than accepting defeat, you know, we were taught to adapt and overcome right, right. away, you know, in boot camp. Right. So taking those, that mentality, that military mentality and saying, no, if what some people see as an obstacle, we see as opportunities. Right. Um, right. If you tell, you know, a vet you can't do it, well, that's like a double dog area. You now watch me do yeah. it. So it's just, right. So taking that past and that history, and even what I was ashamed of for so many years, and say, no, no longer. I'm not going to let anybody yes. in and making a difference in someone's life. Right. So. And, and I do want to get to viewer questions too, but Barbara, I just wanted to bring you into this. I want you to, I want you to tell us about American Snippets, but I also, you know, we're talking a little bit about that military vibe and how you overcome. But I think the other thing is that we wouldn't have asked for this pain, right? No. At all. None of us. <laughs> um, and we would trade it if we could probably for the lessons, you know, but what do you think about your kids when you see them going through pain, right? How do you take this experience and say, 
pain is not necessarily the worst thing. I mean, I don't know, just as a mother, I look at my kid's pain and instead of being terrified of it, I go, this is an opportunity while you're still under my roof to teach you how to overcome pain, to teach you you're stronger than you think, to teach you you're gritty and you're awesome, right? Like, I don't, I don't wish the pain on them, but when it comes, I'm not shattered by it like I might have been before, right? Well, Taya Kyle, a much better mother than me. Because oh, stop <laughs> it, stop it. <laughs> because um, while I came around to that, it took me years to yes, come around to did. that. Yes, but you did. You had so four little boys. My, yes, but my you know, initial instinct, I just, when this happened, when my asthma was killed, I dropped, like literally, literally to the floor and uh, you know, couldn't really get up for a while. And um, had that moment, it wasn't a gun, it was a bottle of pills in my hand. I remember that moment and hearing my kids hmm. in the other room and seriously considering, you know, because that's, that's where I went. So I wasn't about, I wasn't able to look at them and say, you know, we're gonna come out of this better for a long Not time. Not at first, For right. a long time, uh, yeah. And so, for a very long time, my instinct was then to protect them right. from everything, and I became overprotective. Right. And then, so I went through a lot of phases, um, and now, finally, I think, yeah. you know, we're coming, we're coming out, and they but are But Barb, that's the, real, like, that's the raw honesty yeah. of it, though, because like, I don't think you, you know, none of us overcame the pain overnight, right? Like there were phases, yeah. right? And we don't have enough time to go through all of it. But I, I mean, one of the many reasons that I adore you is your vulnerability and your honesty and your transparency, because that helps everybody heal. That is the truth. I mean, when I see my kids in pain, it's not, oh, great, an opportunity, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's, geez. but, um, but I do see it as like, okay, like I have to stop, I have to breathe, I have to remember that it takes time, I have to remember that there's a process, right? The, the guys that you're helping, the people you're helping, you work with veterans still, it, we know it's not overnight, but isn't there some part of you that says, I also know that with dogged determination, yes. we can, right? Like, I can see people through it, even yeah. though it's not gonna be calm. Yeah, yeah, and what I've seen in my kids, I find these things out well after they've happened, you know. Um, my kids have become super compassionate to right. their friends who are going through hard times, so even mm -hmm. though, my kids can be looking to, it can appear that they're having a difficult time, they're struggling with this or that. I then find out that, you know, two of my children have helped suicidal friends yeah. through crises. Right. Um, literally in those moments, you know, yeah. and you know, one of them has saved another kid's life at a party when right. they found out. And, and I find out all these extraordinary things that my kids are doing. They're like, well, mom, you know, everything, everybody else just kind of hmm. freaks out, but I'm, I've learned how to kind yes. of live in some kind of chaos, if you will, and right. so I see what needs to be done, and I do it while everybody right. is falling apart. And I'm like, well, there's that's wisdom pretty, in that, yes. right? Like yeah. that's the blessing that you would yeah. never sign up for, but we no. also can't deny it, right? And if we deny it, then we get to the hopelessness part, and I think hopelessness is what what leads to suicide more than anything yeah. else, worthlessness and hopelessness. And it's not the answer, things do get better, but you have to have the, some sort of life experience or somebody reach out to help you, which is what this book is full of, mm -hmm. is stories mm -hmm. where somebody said, I, I'm gonna give you a little bit of hope for the next step, right? Mm -hmm. And it comes from kids, mm -hmm. it comes from adults. I mean, we, we specifically got a cross section all across America of, of different sports players, musicians, kids, mm -hmm. you know, just a guy next door and and they somehow came together to yeah. bring, and American Snippets does that all the time. That's what you live for is telling these other good I mean yeah. American Spirit and American Snippets, that's that's uh -huh. the good in you the world, right? You copied me, but that's not I copied you. <laughs> Shut up, Barb, it is not. <laughs> not. American Snippets book coming out next. Um, so, okay, but I know I could get caught up talking to you guys forever, and I know there are a few questions, too, from... Yeah, everyone online is super excited. We even have someone watching from Senegal. So, wow, there you go. Um, and people are ordering the book, and I just wanted to mention that if anyone would like a signed copy of the book, um, you can order that from Bookends. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to see if we could get you one. And um, you have to go to Bookends. <laughs> you have to go to Bookends. <laughs> I'll let no. And then um, uh, Bookends in Ridgewood, New Jersey, has signed copies. Walmart has an exclusive edition with a bonus chapter, mm -hmm. and then we have books available across the country in Barnes and Noble and everywhere books are sold so also um, Molly I'm gonna tag on to that because I yeah. always have a tag on right yeah. um, but you know you said from Senegal and there are people all over I noticed that's the other thing is 
whether it was American Sniper, American Wife, your story, Barb's story, this is humanity, yeah. right? Like this is not just America, it's it's the spirit in America that we need to remember is in America, because I think our mind is getting off the, the ball of what makes us so great. Um, but this is a, it's a human nature thing, it's a humanity thing. And whether it's the warriors in Poland that Chris knew and the Grom, you know, or if it's the widows that you meet from another country, the, the pain is, that's yeah. the common thread, right? Life Absolutely. on earth was never supposed to be this easy right. path. We, we want it to be, but really I'm starting to see that I, I wouldn't design it with the struggle, but I also know <laughs> yeah. that we are stronger, better souls, right. and we are more compassionate we help people more, yep. and and each of us has a different gift. Like mm -hmm. I wouldn't have ever in a million years thought about the tiny houses on the lake. You know, I, American Snippets is amazing. I, Barb has the most creative entrepreneurial spirit <laughs> to do things like the American Summit in Washington D.C. Yep. Right, 2020. Yep. She's got Gary Sinise there. I'm like, how did you even dream to, to start this movement that you're going to do in Washington D.C.? But you have that gift, and I think the point of American Spirit is that all of us have mm -hmm. a gift and all of us have some struggle, right. and all of us hopefully can see pain in others. Mm -hmm. So of those three things, there's something for everyone to acknowledge and accept and push forward in life, and I'm hoping that the stories, there's something for everyone to just say, yeah, I notice other people in pain, what could I do? What, what gift can I bring to this struggle, whether it's my own or somebody else's? I can, I can use my gifts to help make the world a better place. Right, I think that's what the book will offer other people too. I mean when you have tragedy, when you go through an emotional transformation of some kind, you start to kind of think, this is happening just to me. Right. Um, and you forget that the world is swirling all around you and things are happening to people all around you and that's what makes the three of you so extraordinary is that you were able to come up for air and look around and see, you know, what you could do to give back. and. Um, so as people are reading this book, no matter where they are, maybe they haven't experienced tragedy, maybe they have, but I feel like the stories will inspire anybody, whatever type of loss you've had or not. That's true. And I also think, to your point, you know, you say that we're extraordinary. I'll speak for myself and then I want to hear your feedbacks, but you know, I, I never would be here in a million years if it wasn't for amazing people around me. There's no way I could have survived this without supportive people and without people doing unique things, right? Whatever their gift was that they brought to the table at the right moment. I think it's all a divine weaving. Some people might think it's a coincidence. All I can tell you is I wouldn't be here without other people who showed great kindness to me when I was you know, in the ditches and in the trenches. And I think that's the other part of why American Spirit is so important is we need to remember we have a gift for a reason and People need a human contact. They don't need you know, a letter from the VA. Right. They don't need a cold experience with bureaucracy or your benefits that Barb has had to fight tooth and nail and it pisses me <laughs> off so bad, um, the way you get jacked around by the government. <clears throat> what we need is human contact, right? We need another human being to come in and look us in the eye and say, I'm here. Even if it's just for the moment, I'm here, right? You need people who are out there to know with American Snippets that it's not they're not alone in seeking out goodness, right? right? I mean, Barb told me a story, get this, the other day, about a woman she had on who was thinking of homeless women and the fact that they needed bras and tampons mm -hmm. and natural disasters and the fact that what do you do in a natural disaster when you've lost everything and you have your period, right? I mean, it's like, it's kind of, she's got a great sense of humor. She does. Which I she's said you'd have to have yes. if you drive a truck full of tampons. No, you have to sit here. <laughs> your wife is back there too, probably laughing, going, this is great, yeah. keep at it. Um, but you know what I'm saying yeah. is, it doesn't, like she's quirky, she's got this great personality, she thinks of something offhand. It may seem like not a big deal, but I promise you from the person that just went through a devastating hurricane yes. who's in that situation, right? Or has a teenager who's like, yes, you know, it, it's a little thing to somebody, right. but it's a really big thing to somebody else who's right. only got the clothes on their back. Yes. You know, it's like whatever your quirky personality, whatever your heart <laughs> leads you, just do it, right? Yes. Just do it. It's, it, why not? If it helps one person, right. it helps the ripple effect go out in the world. Yeah. Right. So, and more, um, if it, yes, I agree. And if it happens to you, um, it, I think it's, it makes you, what makes you all remarkable is also a very natural human instinct because mm -hmm. something has happened to you and you, you finally know how that feels mm -hmm. and you know what you need and that's how you know what to offer other right. people. Yeah. So uh, I guess I'll ask a question of the three of you. Is there a person that you remember specifically first helping you break through what you were working on, working through. 
You want to go back? <laughs> Sorry, look this way. <laughs> you want me to look this way now first? No, I, I, I'll go. My yeah. wife. Absolutely my wife. Um, when I met my wife, I was uh, just, you know, got clean and sober. Um, and it's funny, I, I told her she should be sitting here talking to you because you could probably relate, or you two would relate more. Um, oh, God, we might just go personal. Um, I remember <laughs> the first time um, my wife you know, came in the bedroom to surprise me, and she just wanted to kiss me on the cheek. And um, I didn't know this, but I woke up on top of her, and I was choking her. Oh. And I didn't realize how bad you know my PTSD were, the issues that I was struggling. We call it issues, but we don't say PTSD. Yeah, yeah. But the yeah. issues that we have... Um, I remember her looking at me and then, you know, saying, you need help, you know, and, yeah. and I didn't want to get the help. You know what I mean? And it took probably about 10 years before I saw therapists and counselors and psychologists and so on, um, a lot of people. And, um, but I, for her to stick by me, you know what I mean? And just say, hey, I'm going to, you know, do the really, really bad. Like she didn't know me in the good times. You know what I mean? She knew me from the rock bottom and, and just stood by my side as, you know, this, this journey. Um, and even when we purchased a property, what a lot of people don't know is um, the property is an amazing grace, his name, but the realtor, or I'm sorry, the mortgage holder wanted my wife and I to personally guarantee the loan. Yes. And I'm a pastor. She's a special ed teacher. Yeah. We don't have no money. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. So, yeah. so that loan, um, yeah, it's not dischargeable in bankruptcy. We, yeah. It's a $1.3 million mortgage that we're responsible for for the next 30 years. Wow. So it's... So even for her to, to say, yeah, you know what? We know that God's called us to do this for her. Because I'll sign the papers. I'll jump yeah. out of an airplane and figure out how to land right. later. Right. Um, she's my planner. So for her to say, no, you know what? I see this mission and, and my life has been changed and her wanting to help others. So she's really yeah. the hero. I'm just, you know, I'll just kick a door in and run through it. I don't mm -hmm. care you know what I mean. But yeah. she's, yeah, she's the trooper. So. That's so awesome. And it's, I mean, I think that's why the Chris Kyle Frog Foundation, that's one of the reasons. I saw that. Yeah, but that's one of the reasons we do what we do because yeah. it, it takes a partnership in good mm -hmm. faith and it takes, you know, you can't just fight all the evil and all the hell that comes at you alone. You we're can't. We're trying to build a retreat center, so you want to start sending mm -hmm. couples. We're, like, we're talking. I we're got talking. You, it's your wife. We're talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and Barb, what about you? Um, like you, countless people over here, and you're one of them, you yeah. know, um, when you agreed to meet that day and meet the widows, but... I think it was a two-pronged thing. It was, I remember um, the people, the community, yeah. It, yeah. you know, not even necessarily one person. It was the entire community and people across the country, mm -hmm. like writing me letters, yeah. people who didn't know me, writing me letters and, you know, putting, sending checks for a fund for my children that I didn't even know had been started. Yeah. And people, I remember, uh, you know the terrible ride to the the services that day and just like a, it's a nightmare and i remember the people on the streets with the flags and yeah. these signs and i think it was the way the community and the people showed up for our family and for my husband you know in, in that time and just lining and you know, one guy in particular on a tractor passing me in the limo and took his hat off and mm -hmm. bowed. And I mean, I can see it in my head, you know, so uh, it was all of those. So I would you know, thank everybody who who does that, who shows up. Thank yeah. everybody who is listening. If you're one of those people who shows up mm -hmm. and stands on the corner and is in the procession, they may think that they're just one in the crowd yeah. and it's not gonna matter if they don't show up. But I'm gonna tell you, it matters when you show up because I don't want to get any emotional, you know, but I rem I remember that they showed up. So yeah. I would say just keep showing up. That's that is such a brilliant Same thing. I'm so <laughs> glad you said it. Um, but you know what? You're right. It is it is showing up, and I yeah. think that's the thing. When you see somebody who's going through cancer, mm -hmm. or you see somebody who's struggling with emotional issues, or a widow, and you don't know what to say or what to do, and I think people often get paralyzed by that. They don't want to say or do the wrong thing. But what I think we can all agree to is that. If somebody just shows up, right? They, they can be silent. They can be right. saying, "I don't know what to say. I just want to be with you." Unless you want to be alone, right? right. Like you know, something like that. I remember, um, you know, I had a, a friend come over once, and I said, um, "You know, I, I don't, I don't know where I am today. Like, I don't even know if you want to be here right now. Like, I'm kind of all over the place." And she said, "That's fine. That's what I'm here for. If you want to laugh, we laugh. Mm -hmm. If you want to cry, we cry. That's, you know, that." And and um, my other fear was going into the, like what I would call it, going into the ditch. I always said, like, yeah. I'm afraid when I'd really let myself feel the pain, I'd start to throw up, right? Like, I can remember a couple of times calling a doctor friend of mine and being, like, starting to hyperventilate and saying, like, I've got, I, I'm trying to keep it down. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, like, panicked. I'm trying to keep the emotion down, but, like, it's starting to come up. I'm going to vomit. I'm going to vomit. You know, like, that, that kind of thing. And one of them said, Taya, it's okay to go in the ditch. 
we'll go there with you mm -hmm. and we'll get you out, mm -hmm. right? And for whatever reason, that that metaphor worked for me. Like, yeah. so I can go there and I'm not gonna get stuck there because right. I thought it's so big and it's so dark that if I let myself, that's it for me. Yeah. I won't be able to get out. And so um, just showing up, honestly, mm -hmm. and, and I feel like a lot of the stories in American Spirit what blew my mind and was so beautiful is these people really most of the time just showed up and then all of a sudden something sparked in them right. they didn't intend to start a big no. deal right like they just showed up and some of them we purposely left in there that stayed a little bit small because what's small to the outside world is huge to the person that's yes. receiving it and it matters so i think i think that really overall is the message is if you feel something in you right spark let it spark mm -hmm. let it be that light and don't be afraid of being a light for somebody don't be afraid of showing up and having nothing to say yeah. right or bringing your gift yeah. you know somebody put flags in my my flower bed at dollar store anonymously right and it wasn't even a flower bed at that time by the way it was like a bed of dirt <laughs> yeah. um you know but i was like that's so cool and it cost them nothing right, right. or somebody yeah. writes a poem or is somebody yes. saying i see your pain and i think that invisible pain yeah. the invisible wounds are sometimes the most traumatic for people. Right. And it's not a forever sentence, right? No, like that right. PTS, PTSD, not forever. Like no. we've all experienced major trauma and stress right. from it in different ways and it's not a forever thing. You can heal. That's um, the perfect segue. We have a question from Diana Dillon. Um, she's a big fan and uh, she's been watching and commenting and saying how much she loves your books. And she, her question is, uh, what can people do to help? And what I think she's saying is, you know, um, hmm. what can people do to start to find ways to give back in their communities? That's a great question. Um, because I come from a faith perspective, I believe like you just pray and ask God, like God lead me, use me as a tool and see what happens. For somebody who's not of faith or doesn't have that same belief system, I think you can get quiet, you can meditate, you can do whatever you do to get centered and really try to figure out like, where is my heart? Like, where if I really access my gut, do I feel led, you know? And start there. That One of the stories in here that's so cool is these two teenage girls who were at home, and they were like, we're bored. What could we do that's, like, more productive? And they started on a whiteboard. They just started writing ideas. And they came up with, like, nursing homes, you know? Like, let's visit and see. And all of a sudden they realized, you know, these people don't have socks, like their mm -hmm. feet are cold, right? So they started this whole thing called Sweet Feet. And, and I'll let you read the book to find out like <laughs> yeah. what happens, but I'm thinking, yeah, <laughs> right you. here <laughs> on sale at Walmart. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so it's sh shameless plug, I thanks, I Donnie. You. <laughs> thanks. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so it's in the book and um, there's a teaser, but it's but it, the point is that it, it really is just, they just got kind of, thoughtful about it. They just really thought, and, and I think the biggest thing that people can can also, well, I guess I've said biggest a lot. There are a lot of biggest uh, things they can get from it. One of the big things is that you, we all can do something and we are going to benefit from doing it. Right. When you access your soul, there's a power in that that's like nothing else. When you, when you get really basic and you set anger and politics and everything else aside, you can go back to it. I'm not saying if you can leave it behind if that's who you are, but set it aside for just a minute and start to go like, what's, what's good for my heart and what could I do to help other people? It'll come to you. Even Maybe you just join what somebody else started. We don't all have to start something. God knows there's 40,000 you know, yeah. military charities alone. So I don't think everybody needs to start something. I just think you need to listen to where you're led. I don't know. See where your strengths are. Yeah, exactly. See where your strengths are. See where your heart leads. And start like those girls did. I mean, these kids, everybody wants to say the next generation is, we're in so much trouble. And I think every generation has said that, by the way, the generation before the greatest generation right. said that about them. <laughs> Fact. Um, but it's not true, right? And so I think you'll find in these stories, too, that people were inspired by their kids. You know, there's a story about um, one kid and what he did with Halloween. And he just told his parents, and his parents were like, okay, right? They had a choice. They had a choice to say, oh, honey, that's a good idea, but we're like really busy and whatever. But they didn't. They listened. And then it grew into this whole phenomenon in the town. And it's, it's, I think it's keeping your eyes open to opportunities and, and tuggings at your heart. Right? One yeah. of the things that I took away from reading is um, that it doesn't have to be the same model every time. It doesn't no. have to be something that other people have done before. Better if it's not. Right. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Because there's something, just as much as we all have a different perspective and gift, yeah. the people that need help are different mm -hmm. and they need it differently and I think that's part of my frustration even with 
you know, the VA, the people who work at the VA, my aunt works there, God bless them, I'm not saying that, but but overall, the bureaucracy yeah. is, it's not <clears throat> a one size fits all thing, right? Like somebody needs to go to Donnie's place, they need that lake, they need the land, and they need healing like that. Somebody else needs to hear from Barb that good things are happening yeah. in the world, right? Somebody else has a marriage that they're desperate to save and they need Chris Kyle Frog Foundation. It's, it's different, it's different for yeah. people. We have so many people commenting and liking, and we have people f watching in the UK. I love the UK, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we have Phoenix, Ireland. Love the um, Irish. I love. I mean, yeah. Yeah, Oklahoma. Irish. I like everybody. I, well, okay. I was waiting for her to say, well, "I don't like that country." <laughs> I know. Yeah. Give me one that I she won't like. Say, no, okay. I don't like I that country. country. I like people. Barb. You don't know. Yeah. Yeah. There are people I don't like. We've got Romania. <laughs> We still have value and we love that. Makes it. From a Christian perspective. Correct. <laughs> Sorry. So, I'm, you know, Alaska, New Jersey, everyone's watching. You said Jersey? Yeah, oh, Jersey. Okay. Vineland, New yeah. Jersey. Yeah. Um, so, this is a big, you know, everyone across the country is coming together. Awesome. Um, and it's just great to see all the excitement for the book. Um, so, like I said, it's on sale tomorrow. Yes. Everywhere. Everywhere. Um, and at Walmart and at Bookends if you want to sign copy. We have audiobooks that yes. I read. Yes. And we have Kindle and digital versions. Yeah. We got it all. You're it, not going to make fun of that time? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just waiting. I'm trying to Don't break. stop my, my wife's back there looking at me going like this. No, she no, 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 no. She knows. She knows. <laughs> you got to keep doing this. Yeah. You actually read the whole book. I did? Yeah. I read my she, book? No, 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 no. Oh, I was like, yeah, I read the freaking book. Yeah. I wrote the book with Jim. Yeah. God, is Jim DeFelice going to get all the credit? Is that you reading okay, it? I will give Jim DeFelice all the credit. He did an amazing job. And yeah. if there are any mistakes in it, it's his fault, too, though. You see how that goes? Right, Just kidding. I, did, I, I was going to hit you again. Don, I know. You keep hitting me. It's, it's like, okay. It's the warrior. The definition I like... of assault is unlawful touching, so I'm just, it's okay. So is it's this lawful camera. or unlawful? <laughs> the arm will... Am I invited? Are yes, you consenting to my punching? Yeah, you're good. All right. No, the. Where the F were we? Okay, so um, <laughs> I, bring the, I did narrate. I'm sorry. I did narrate. That, that's all I was asking. Yes, and I'll I'll buy me, the audible now. I think you ought to because really, cleaning house, you know, building out, whatever. I mean, truly, the audiobooks. Busy yeah. mom, like, are you kidding me? Right? We put it on audio, and we can. Um, and Barb's got a podcast you can listen to too, American Snippets. And Amazon. And yeah. That's good. That's good. <laughs> but I did. That's the most. By the way, as a busy mom, person, business, whatever, sitting in a room. Right. I want to call it a padded room. I'm not really sure if it is or not, but it feels like sort of the same thing. Um, but it's, you know, it's soundproof and you have a glass of like hot tea so your throat is nice and headphones and your phone's off. And I mean, there's yeah. something, there's when something special about that kind of, room. oh yeah, that kind of room. Yeah. We don't have that. No, you're going to get that. I'm going to have that room free. in my house either. You know, what yeah, was, you need it. It's not in my house, but I, you know, I did it at the studio. All right. Okay. Well, we might have people from all 50 states and now South Africa. Everyone's chiming in. Love South Africa. Yeah. Challenge me on that. I do. I love Zimbabwe. Those are my yeah. people, too. Yeah. So American Spirits on sale tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for doing this and being here. Yeah, and thank you. And telling us your stories, in. bringing them to life for us. Yeah. And for everything that you do. Well, thank you. Yeah, we appreciate everybody chiming in, too. Thanks.